Good afternoon, Dr. Gary here. <clears throat> we sell dental practices nationwide, and we're here to help you. The name of our company is Healthcare Practice Sales, LLC. And today's topic is the when involved in the sale of a dental practice, how involved does the seller or buyer have to be during the process? In other words, how much do they have to monitor the progress of the sale of a dental practice, be it buyer or seller? Well, first and foremost, it's hope you've taken our advice and you always get a dental attorney for the buyer and a different dental attorney for the seller. The buyer uses a dental bank. That begins to create your foundation. But you've got to monitor these things constantly. And I'll talk, this next uh, sequence, this next video is gonna talk about that. So anyway, I'm Dr. Gary. I was a dentist for 25 years and we ha now have for 11 years been doing the dental practice brokerage. And uh, we now have eight employees. We're in 19 states. We'll be expanding very soon. In fact, we're going down to Florida. I think next week we have four new practices to see down there. So our phone number is 201-663-0935. Our website is dental practiceguide.com all the information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes it's not business or legal advice so we work every day except Christmas and Easter and from 7 30 a.m. till 9 30 p.m. we answer the phone constantly in fact the only time we don't answer the phone is when we are swimming in the ocean or flying in a plane that's it so getting back to it now let's get into today's topic how often do you, the buyer or seller, have to be monitoring the actual progress of the sale of the dental practice? When can you take your foot off the gas? Well, you can't. And I'll give you an example. If you've been following up in the last few, we've had this deal that should have closed back in what they predicted back in the beginning of August. Then they said the beginning of September. Then they said October 4th. Then they said October 6th. It just kept changing. And you've got to simply count that we as the brokers will constantly watch everything, constantly get updated. And as we told you last time, we were supposed to close on October 4th. This is real estate and a dental practice. And we're working with the uh, dental practice broker. That's who we are. And we uh, also work with the real estate broker. So uh, everything was supposed to be in the bank on the 28th of the month of October excuse me, September, so that they could be closing on the 4th. Well, they weren't watching on the 28th if everything was in. We had to start calling. We called on the Friday before the Monday closing, and they said, nope, we don't have all the documents. I said, I wish everybody watched this. I can't believe this. So come Monday, I said, well, when is your next date? I can't believe you're not closing. Okay, let's the next day. So on the Monday, we started checking with everybody. Are you gonna have everything ready for a Wednesday closing? Does everybody have everything? Is everything set? So we kept calling them and calling them and finally they say we're set. But you as the buyer and the seller, you have to watch and monitor. Call us and we'll monitor it for you. But you still gotta keep your eye on it. So on the Monday, which was supposed to be closed, they didn't close. They then postponed that to uh, the following Wednesday, well, the Wednesday, the 6th. And finally, on the 6th, it did close. And we were checking with everybody. Is everything done? The bank sent me a note. Yeah, we funded everything. We are all set. Everything's done. Okay, so I'm assuming at that point, we are ready to move forward because everything is supposedly done. Uh, and they said they funded the money. So that day, at about 2 o'clock, I checked with all the attorneys. And they say, yes, we have done the closing and we will be funding the money this afternoon. Well, by 4.30, the broker, myself, didn't get the money and was starting to be concerned. They confirmed, yes, it was sent out. So about 5.20 or so, then I noticed the money was sent out, or the wired money. However, I was checking with the real estate broker to see if he received his money. 
And by 5.20 on Wednesday, the day of the closing, he still hadn't received his Monday money. Okay, maybe it was delayed one day or they processed at the end of the day. So he then checked uh, the next day at 12 o'clock, check with the bank, have you funded, are you sure you funded? Because the real estate broker didn't get his money yet. They said, no problem. We've already funded everybody. Everybody should have their money. Check with the realtor again at two o'clock, no. I start emailing, this is on Thursday, the next, the day after the closing. So at four o'clock, I email both attorneys on both sides. Mind you, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a dental attorney for the buyer and a real estate attorney for the buyer. There's a real estate broker, then there's the dental broker. So I check with the real estate, bro real estate uh, broker. I still hadn't received his money at 4.30 on Thursday. I call all the attorneys, okay, what's the story now? You had the closing on Wednesday, they, they funded all the money. Where's the money? Oh, we don't know, we don't know. We'll check, we'll check with the title company. So by 4.30, they're sending emails, where's the money for the real estate broker? Still didn't get it. So now that day's gone, he didn't get his money on Thursday. I start calling Friday morning, okay, the real estate broker did not receive his money on Thursday, where's the money for the broker? And the broker's calling also. They're going, well, you're gonna check, we'll check, we'll see what the story is. Again, you have to monitor everybody. I know this is only a few days, but you know, people make plans, and we're aware of that for our buyers and sellers. You know, we're aware of what you go through. But they told the closing was supposed to be beginning of uh, August. Then it's going to be in September. Then finally in October 6th. So I'm calling that morning now on Friday after the closing. We're going to check. We're going to check. We'll get in touch with the title company. They're handling the real estate. At 9.20, 9.30 that morning of the Friday, the real estate broker contacts me and said, still didn't get my wire. So I'm back with the attorneys, back with the title company. Title company finally says, oh, okay, we're going to wire it out today, this morning. We're on top of it. Well, it shouldn't be for me to follow up on all this. All the attorneys, the bank should be all communicating. And they didn't. So that's what happened on that one. Thank you, Dr. Gary.